Good morning, Mount Zion Baptist Church family, those in the sanctuary and those on some of the various platforms that we have. Uh, can everyone stand for the reading and the hearing of God's word? The word for this morning comes from Titus 2, 1 and 3, 8. It reads as follows. Titus, oh, tell the, Titus, you must teach only what is correct. Tell the other women to behave as those who love the Lord should. They must not gossip about others or slave of wine. They must teach what is proper. So the younger women will be loving wives and mothers. Each of the younger women must be sensible and kind as well as a good homemaker who puts her own husband first. Tell no one can say insulting things about God's message. Tell the young men to have self-control in everything. Always set a good example for others. Be sincere and serious when you teach. Use clean language that no one can criticize. Do this and your enemies will be too ashamed to say anything against you. That was the reading, Titus. Let's all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, precious Lord, thank you for your word this morning. Uh, we want to be doers, not just hearers of your word. We want to follow your word, Father, that we may be pleasing to you. We, we want to do the things that glorify you by following what you say we should do. Honor women. Uh, have a clean mouth. Don't say things that are offensive, Father. Those things uh, bring sin to you and not glory to you. But we thank you this morning for you have allowed us to come to hear your word <laughs> and to understand your word and understand how to be sensible and serious in your word, Father. We love you for what you have done and what you continue to do for us. We thank you. We praise you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Mount Zion, we have uh, now object lesson. We want to learn a lesson from the objects that we have. Um, anyone from the age of 11 and under, come to the front. 11 and under, come to the front and be part of the object lesson. <coughs> 11 and under, if you would like to come to the front, have a front row seat of the object lesson. Yeah, two this morning. So the object lesson, what we're going to use for the object lesson this morning is something that's real simple. It's called a mousetrap. It's made out of uh, wood and a uh, little metal and spring. And this is the way you used to catch mouse all around your house. This little mousetrap right here. Yeah. Mousetrap, old-fashioned, but very effective. That was the way to catch a mouse. So, you know, sometimes people will, when I grew up, people would always say, when they didn't want to do something or didn't like it, they would say, let's find a, a better way to make a mouse trap. Let's find a better way. This mouse trap is very efficient. It does the trick. So we think about that, finding a better way. You know, when you get older and you go to school, going to big universities, and you meet people from all over the world, not just this country, from all over the world, and they have different ways of thinking. You know, when people say build a better mousetrap from other places, what they say is, I don't agree with this, so let me do something else. And they think of other ways to do those things. But we know. Building a better mousetrap is not always the best way. Some people will say there's more than one way to get to God, right? They'll believe that. People from other countries, more than one way to get to God. They believe Hindu, Islamic, other religions. But when you get to those big universities, those big schools, you got to remember what we learn as Christians. God says it's only one way. 
Read John 14, 6, King James Version. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way. Rich people want to say there's more than one way. People from other countries want to say there's more than one way. There's only one way to get through God, through Jesus Christ, holding on the sinful man's hand, and holding on his father's hand and bringing them together. That is the way, the way. There is no other way. So remember that when you guys get to university, college, because you're going to always be a challenge in philosophy classes and other psychology, uh, sociology, cla sociology classes about your religion. Remember, there's only one way. John 14, 6, King James Version. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, precious Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for helping us understand there's only one way to you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is no way through other, any other type of religion. There is no way through Buddha or um, uh, Islam. There's one way, and that's through your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for this word. We thank you for understanding of this word. We ask that when we go out that we're able to say there's only one way, not many ways. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.
my God. When I am weak, that's when I am strong. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 says that he had a thorn in his flesh a messenger of Satan to buffet him. And he says, I talked to the Lord three times about it, asking him to remove it. And he didn't. But he said, what I did get was grace that was more than enough. And then you read on, he talks about how my strength is made perfect in my weakness in other words when i am weak that's when i'm strong because i've learned to depend on god who is the strength of my life who's the source of my strength and so every saint of god ought to tell the lord thank you for being your strength where you know those moments when you felt so low you felt so down and you found strength come on somebody leaping up in your spirit where you were able to say i can make it that i will not give up my god i will not throw in the towel my god Come on, y'all. When I am oh, when I'm weak, that's when. When I'm strong, anybody got that testimony? Come on, say it like you mean it. When I'm weak, that's when. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, when I'm weak. Second Sunday in May. Amen. This day where we celebrate mothers and how we give and praise the Lord for your contributions in the life of not only your children, your extended children, your grandchildren. Say amen. That's what we've turned aside to do on this day. But of course, um, we're not going to get that mixed up with the Lord's worship. Say amen. He is worthy of the worship of his people. Say amen. Man, I'm standing here with a dilemma. I'm standing with a dilemma. Trying to determine which direction I'm going to go this morning. That don't happen much. And I think I messed up because I got on the slide thing both of what I might do. Say amen. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for this chance, this opportunity to come, come before you in this time of worship. I pray for a fresh filling of your spirit. Cleanse me now from all unrighteousness that your word will go forth in power. Stand in my body now, think with my mind, speak with my mouth. Give me clarity as to what you would have me to share. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Um, if that Proverbs text comes up first, um, is that on there? All right, well, Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. 31. And verse 10. You see it there. Text says, Who can find a virtuous woman? Goes on to say, For her price. You see it there, that her price is far above rubies. And the people of God said amen. 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 Several years ago, I hung this title on this text. And uh, based on what we're looking at here, I want to borrow from the Shylites. who sung a song entitled, Have You Seen Her? Have you seen her? One month ago today, <laughs> I was happy as a lark. Y'all know the song. But now I go for a walk to the movies, maybe to the park. I, I have a seat on the same old bench to watch the children play, huh? You know, tomorrow is their future. But for me, just another day. They all gather around me, huh? They seem to know, Marva, stop shouting right there. They seem to know my name. We laugh, tell a few jokes, but it still doesn't ease my pain. I know I can't hide from a memory, though today, though day after day I've tried, I keep saying she'll be back. But today, again, I've lied. Can I get a witness? Lord have mercy. Oh, I see her face everywhere I go, on the streets and even at the picture show. Have you seen her? Tell me. Have you seen her? Oh, I hear her voice in the cold winds blow as they blow her in the sweet music on my radio. Have you seen her? Tell me. Have you seen her? I don't want nobody going to go into crying. But that's the song. Can y'all say amen? amen? And some of y'all looking at me, you know that song, Oh Too Well. Oh Too Well. Now, the interesting thing, just looking at those lyrics, um, one of the things that stands out to me in the text is that here is an imaginary, elusive woman who cannot be found. A guy is looking for her. He's asking the question, have you, have you seen her? I thought about this Shy Light song, and that is, in fact, what this text in Proverbs seemed to be screaming out at me. Have you seen her. Can I get a witness? In order to understand this section of Proverbs 31, you have to look at the very first verse. Verse 1 tells us what we have here is what? These are the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy or oracles that his mother 
taught him. And although biblical history does not tell us who King Lemuel was, we don't know. Um, but what we do know is that he, what he writes here in this 31st chapter of Proverbs is what his mother taught him. And so what we are really have here is an analysis and a view of a mother uh, as it pertains to the kind of son that her boy would spend his life with. Can I get a witness? It is such a telling text because it is really what every mother uh, looks to do to give advice to her son about her. As I look at Proverbs 31, it seems that the her is an elusive and uh, is difficult to locate. You just can't find her. Can I get a witness? She seems to be absent from both inside the church and from outside the church. And if we are keeping it 100 in so many instances, it's hard to tell, if you look at it, the difference between uh, the, the, the women of the world and the women of the world, of the word rather, on the inside. Think uh, about it. Both seem to choose the road of immorality. Both seem to compromise their worth and their value. Both allow themselves to be influenced by the small G-O-D of this world. And so we borrow from the shy lights. Have you, have you seen her? Yeah, this is the prophecy of Lemuel. Now, I want you to note something about King Lemuel, and, and that is something about his name. His name connotes ownership. His name literally means belonging to God. His mother valued that, that the Lord gave me a son that belongs to the creator above. And it is incumbent upon me as a mother who has the opportunity to instill truth into the life of her son that you be weary and careful to make sure you pick the right one. Can I get a witness? Yeah, 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 this is important, it's critical. We must be careful not to criticize uh, Lemuel's mother. Uh, maybe we can learn some things from her, and that is parents, listen here closely, be sure to teach your children what kind of person that they should be, that they should be looking for in future mates. And the reason is because if you don't model that, and that, that is important, especially for single mothers, because if you don't model that, if you don't lay out such principles, don't, do not be mad, don't be surprised if um, your child brings in a Kanye West and uh, a, y'all know the other fellow named Jamie Foxx kind of woman, a gold digger. Can I get a witness? Well, have you seen her? And I don't have a lot of time to unpack this, but this becomes, I think, a good word for every mother, especially with children, be they young or old, that you want to make sure that you pour into the life of your children, especially your boys. Can I get a witness? Our future leaders, the future heads of households, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And I believe that we can learn some things from Lemuel's mother. One of the things that Jewish parents did with their sons was to use the book of Proverbs to teach them how to select the right woman and to avoid the wrong one. 
Can I get a witness to show you what I mean in several places in Proverbs? Proverbs 9, 13, for example, it says that a foolish woman is noisy. She is wanton and knows no shame. Eugene Peterson says that there, then there, there's this other woman, Madam Whore, brazen, empty-headed, and frivolous. Can I get a witness? Proverbs 19, 13. This is what Jewish mothers would run by their sons, the Jewish Old Testament scripture, the word of God. They would run by Proverbs 19 and 13 and say to their son that a foolish son is his father's ruins and a quarrelsome wife is like a constant drip. Eugene Peterson got something to say about that too. He says a nagging spouse is a leaking faucet. Can I get a witness? This is what they would do. They would take their children, share the word of God, and help to give them guidance along the way. What is my word to you, my sisters, on this Lord's Day that we celebrate Mother's Day? I'm looking. Have you seen her? Are you her? Can I get a witness? Well, what is it about this woman? Well, have you seen, if you look at Proverbs 31, have you seen her stance? Yeah, she's a principal woman. She excels, says Solomon. She stands out in relationships. You notice in the text that I read, it talked about her price for her worth. Her price is far above rubies. That's her price. Yes, yeah, she excels. She stands out. She is not some low budget girl who has low morals and high expectations. Are y'all listening at what I'm saying? No, this woman is strong. This woman, and particularly when you look at the word virtuous, it gives the picture of the strength of an army. It's a word that refers to a person who has some strength, who has character, who has integrity. That's the her that Solomon's, uh, that, that Lemuel's mother uh, says that you ought to be looking for a woman who has standing. Some woman who knows the Lord, who knows the importance of spending time with God and models that before her children. Can I get a witness? Her price. Notice in verse 11, it says the heart of her husband safely trust her so that he will have no lack of gain. That's her perfection, if you would. You got her price. Have you seen her stance? It's seen in her price. It's seen in her perfection. This woman is trustworthy. She's always has been or has uh, the best interest of her loved ones at heart. Her husband, not her boo, not her boyfriend, not her boy toy. No, her trust is seen and her love is given towards her husband. All those around her are blessed by and benefit from this woman's diligence. She's a woman who stands. That's the word every mother ought to be a woman who stands in excellence, who doesn't lower uh, their value trying to accommodate knuckleheads. Are y'all gonna help me out here? Yeah, that's her, her, her stance, her stance. Uh, she got a plan even. Yeah, you see her price in the text. You, you see her perfection in the text. You see her plan in the text. Verse 12 says, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. If you notice here, this woman is an asset and not a liability to either her husband or her children. I've just come to ask you, have you seen her? She 
uh, can be seen based on her stance. But if you go through Proverbs, and I ain't got time to unpack all of it, but let me just give you this outline, if you would. Uh, her, you, you see her strength. Uh, have you seen not only her 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 stance, but have you seen her sacrifice? She sacrifices for her family, for her children. And some of you looking at me, you have been the benefactor of a sacrificing mother who gave of herself, especially a single parent mother who worked her fingers to the bone to make sure you had everything you needed. You ought to tell God, thank you. I've seen her. <laughs> I watched her in my home. My grandparents, as you know, raised me, and my grandmother had major impact on my life. And I saw a woman who never bucked up to her husband. I saw a woman who always was submitted to her husband. I would watch my grandmother, there are two things that she loved to do. One, she loved to read the, read the scriptures, and she loved to play her puzzles. Somebody knows what I'm saying. The Oakland Tribune used to have the puzzles in them. And she worked those puzzles every day. Yes, yeah, she was a woman who stood. She was a woman who sacrificed. But notice this woman, if you want to see her sacrifice, notice how she gives um, of her talents freely. You see it in the text, verse, verse, verse 13, 14, New Living Translation says she finds wool and flax and busily spins it. Verse 14, she is like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. What I'm saying is she gives of her talents freely. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? She gives of her time wisely. Verse 15 says she gets up before daylight and prepare food for her family and for her servants. Verse 18, she perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. You see a woman who manages time and talent well, have you seen her stance? Have you seen her sacrifice? Have you seen her service? Verse 19 of Proverbs 31 says, she spins her own clothes. She knows what to do with a needle and thread. Holly, why y'all quiet? <laughs> she knows what to do. Verse 21 says, her family has warm clothing, yeah. and, she, and she doesn't worry when it snows because she knows how to put some stuff together. Amen. You see her service. Verse 22, uh, this is all contemporary English version. She does her own sewing, and everything she wears is beautiful. This ain't no patch job that she does. Are y'all going to help me here? Yeah, verse 24 says she makes clothes to sell to the shop owners. This is a woman who serves. Have you seen this woman? Can I get a witness? She not only serves, she labors, she loves, and she lifts. Verse 20, if you go back, she exceeds or extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy, this woman lifts. What am I arguing here? Have you seen her? Are you her? And if you don't line up to her, what you going to do to start being like her? That's all I'm trying to say. Do you have a stance? Do you make sacrifices? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Do you uh, serve willingly? That's this woman. And we ought to pause long enough to thank God for the women in all of our lives who have operated like this, who've sacrificed themselves, who've given of themselves, who looked out for others more than they looked out for their own selves. Can I give a witness? Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we overlook it. But I'm just called, wanted to say, and, and, and ask you to do some thinking. 
and then to do some thanking, thanking God for that kind of mother. Can I get a witness? Have you seen her? Yeah, she's seen in her stance. She's seen in her sacrifice. She's seen in the way that she serves. She serves to the glory of God and to the good of her family. But I gotta leave you with this one last thing. It is what have you seen, rather, her secret. What's the secret to a woman like the Proverbs 31 woman? Well, I want to tell you the secret is not in her sewing. The secret is not in her cooking. The secret is not in how she raises the children, but her secret is in her Lord. She has a relationship with the Lord. Can I give a witness? She's devoted to Christ. Hallelujah. And Christ alone. I remember very vividly growing up in my grandmom and granddaddy's house. My grandmother would get up early in the morning and she would fix breakfast. Can I give a witness? Yeah, not some instant microwave stuff. I'm talking about some bacon with the rind on it, some scrambled eggs. Can I give a witness? Or some eggs sunny side up. She'd make toast, not in the toaster, but down in the bottom of the broiler. Somebody knows what I'm saying. And all the while, I'm laying in the bed. I smell the bacon. Hallelujah. I'm about to get hungry now. I smell, I smell the eggs. And sometimes she make great uh, grits uh, or smothered potatoes. I smell the toast in the broiler. But more than what I smelled, it is what I heard. She would be in the kitchen singing songs like swing low. Sweet chariot coming forth to carry me home. She would sing song like precious Lord. Take my hand. Can I get a witness? She would sing song like hallelujah. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I want to lose, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I hear that in my mind. She would sing through many dangers, toss and snares. I've already come. Twas grace that brought me this far, and grace will lead me on. And then, when we got to the table, no going to your room, or me going to my room, she made us sit down at the table. Can I get a witness? And before you ate, you have to say your memory verse. Can I get a witness? In thee, O oh Lord, do I put my trust. If you didn't want to say a whole lot, you say, Jesus, mm, Jesus wept. She was laying foundation. Can I get a witness? And all I'm saying is, thank God for godly mothers. Have you seen them? Yes. Oh, you heard. Maybe you owe your 
children an apology. Tell them that I'm sorry I've modeled the woman of the world, but not the woman of the word. I'm asking y'all to forgive me if you model the woman of the word. The Lord will bless your life. The Lord will bless your house. Can I get a witness? The word is sweet. It's sweeter than a honeycomb. The word, it enlightens. The word, it justifies. Share it. Yes. Share it. Yes. That's the woman that I'm talking about. And that's the woman that we should be celebrating today. I ask you, have you seen her? Are you her? If you know her, tell God thank you for her. Thank you for your mother. If your parents are alive, thank, thank your mama. If they're not, do like me. I thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my grandmama who raised me. Thank you for my, uh, my earthly mother who birthed me. And seek out to be this kind of woman. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, with a message like this, speak to the hearts of your people. Thank you for the influence of our parents, and in particular our mothers, and those who've been motherly to us. There have been some people who didn't have children, but they loved us as if we were their child. We thank you for every church mother who said a word of correction to us. And Lord, we pause to say, thank you for them. Now, Lord, there's somebody here who doesn't know your son. Save them now. Give them life eternal. Let them know that you are the savior of those who don't have a relationship with the father through you. Let salvation be theirs today. Somebody knows you and doesn't have a church home. Let them connect to the mount today. Or who've been away, let them come back home today. That's our simple prayer. We believe in you to do something and make it happen. That is, bring about results. Do it now in Jesus' name. Amen. As we all stand, if you're here needing to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or you know him, don't have a church home, I'd love to be your pastor. We'd love to be your church home. Or you need to come back home. Somebody online, those three areas, text us or call the number that you'll see on the screen. We invite you to come. Come on up. Come on up, praise team. The way I Can anybody online, on the platforms, inbox us, call us.
Somebody inside the sanctuary, come on. Give the Lord a try on this Mother's Day. Get back in church. That's something that a mother would want their child to do. If you're out of fellowship, come on back to fellowship. Don't, don't put it off. Don't ease your way in. Come all the way back in. Jesus. I said, Jesus. I will end this invitation. All of you are saved. You know you have a relationship with the Lord. And you are part of a local church. If you're standing, take your seat. While those who can't say that in the affirmative would remain standing. Let's thank the Lord for all of you here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Well, let's get ready to worship the Lord, not give him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We've been challenged, especially on our Saturday mornings, those who are studying with us on Zoom, some of y'all watching us on Facebook and YouTube. And, and um, thank the Lord for those of you who are responding to the word of God. One of the things that we've been trying to say to all of us as his children is that there's some things, and one thing in particular, that we've got to have as a settled matter in our mind, and that is that the Lord is the sole owner of everything. He's the sole owner. He doesn't have any co-proprietorship. He owns it by himself. Say amen. What's our relationship to that which he owns? We're stewards. He allows us to manage his stuff. And one of the things that the Lord makes clear in his word, that we have an obligation to return to him his tithe. Amen. Somebody calling on the line right now. Let's pray. God, move on that person's heart. If it's somebody calling that doesn't know the Lord, let us make connection with them. In Jesus' name. Yeah, and uh, so that's where Christian giving starts. How are you managing the tithe? Are you returning it? Or are you robbing God of it? We're learning and being reminded afresh that you owe the Lord that which is his. Some people, you hold on to it and, you know, set it aside. You don't lay that in store. You return it. Return the tithe, the Lord says. Bring you all the tithe into the storehouse. You owe the Lord what is his. And I just ask that we do the right thing. And then, of course, we give offering. And then um, you all, um, which I'm grateful for, um, you support me through pastoral support. And I'm grateful to the Lord for each of you. So let's pray. God bless this time of giving. Let it be an act of worship for all of us individually as we do it collectively. Bless the gifts and givers. Bless and meet the needs of the minister and the ministry. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's all stand. Just come on and bring your gifts.
Amen. Deacon Dez, ask the Lord blessing. So good to see you. Amen. On the amen. Amen. Well, God bless you all. God bless you all. Good to see so many of you present on this Lord's Day. I want to ask that you all would uh, keep in prayer. Um, my wife, Sister Bates, she's not feeling well, and uh, but she took the test, and she everything was fine there. This, you know, this that season, a lot of stuff going on, and that's the, the kind of the, the the unsettling part about this COVID is that it'll have a lot of the signs like um, like sinus, mm -hmm. and if any of you all like me, this time of the year will wipe you out. Anybody know what I'm saying? So, you know, let's pray for her, her health, if you're watching. Um, Mavis, I don't know if you are or not, but happy Mother's Day. Hey, man, she was knocked out. Well, actually, I think I woke her up. But um, just pray for her. We're praying for you. And others of you want to pray for Sister Megan, who helps us out, and Brother Devon, um, they both got COVID. Um, probably Devon, we don't know the direction, but it, it had to start like like Thursday. Uh, so don't y'all freak out who we're here Wednesday. Um, uh, she got it from somebody, it looked like on Thursday, uh, either from Devon or somebody from her job. And she gave it to him. So pray for both of him, and in particular for him, I talked to Devon this morning, and he was having some complications breathing. Yeah, yeah, a little, little complication, but he should be okay. I still want to encourage you to get the vaccine if you haven't. Can't make you, but I tell you what, it's sure saving some lives. You do your homework on it. Um, I don't know if you all know this or not. But there is a 156% uptick in the COVID virus in all nine Bay Area counties. Y'all, did y'all know that? Yeah, it's an uptick, it's on the rise. Yeah, and you know, I think again, took the masks off too quick. We've gotten too lax. That's why I ain't letting you come up here without no mask. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do at, at, at BJ's. I don't care what they do at Ruth Chris. No, we're going we gonna to be safe because we're not, we're not out of this thing. And there's too many people who are just careless and who don't think about the health of other people, let alone their own. So let's keep wearing the mask. And doing the things that are precautions, you know, taking the precautions. They're saying that eventually all of us are going to end up getting it. That's what, that's what they're saying. You know, that we're going to all eventually end up getting it. And I think I would rather take my chances getting it, being vaxxed and boosted as opposed to neither. So don't hear me fussing, just hear my heart. And uh, if you haven't done so, still on the fence, talk to the Lord. I can tell you, I've talked to a number of people who've had it. They wouldn't wish that on their worst enemy. Carl has had it a few times, a few, huh? And I've uh, been hospital, like you were hospitalized the first time. He, he, wouldn't, man, he wouldn't say, man, go on, get, try the COVID. That would not be his testimony. And any others of you who've experienced it. So let's do the right thing, all right? Be safe. We're ready to go. Let's stand. I'm determined to stay with Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm encouraged. I'm determined. My mind's made up. I'm going all the way with the Lord. How about you? I couldn't hear nobody. How about you? I'm
time if you really feel that way. No matter what happens, I'm going all the way with Jesus. I'm Lord, we thank you for this day of worship. Thank you for all that's gone for. We are encouraged. That is our resolve. Be with your people. Now, according to your word, I pray that the Lord will bless and protect you and that he will show you mercy and kindness. May the Lord be good to you and give you peace. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. Look to see you tomorrow night for Monday Night Biblical Studies and Youth Ministry. I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged.